Hey guys, so this video is going to be talking about small engine compression. I bought a compression tester kit just for making this video and it's nice to have one around. Um, I've, now I've worked on small engines most of my life and I've always just went by the feel of it like most small engine mechanics do. But there are some people that want the numbers and that's, you know, it's easy, it's good to, and it's good to have the numbers just to have comparisons, you know. Like uh, this engine here is a five horse Briggs flathead. But it's a brand new block. It was a new old stock block. It's a dual shaft one. And I made a video on putting this together a couple years ago. Uh, so you've probably seen this if it looks familiar. So we're gonna get some numbers. We're gonna use about four different engines I think I got picked out. This is gonna be the first one since it is basically a new engine. So this will give us the, the good numbers for a, a flathead Briggs. We're gonna check the mini bike engine which is a set up for higher compression and more performance so we'll get a couple numbers on that uh, we'll get a numbers on a completely stock uh, 18 and a half horsepower model 31 on that troy built merge you've seen in the earlier video and also i got a predator 212 i started building we might get some numbers off of it so uh, let's look at what comes in the kit and get started on this you got papers to read make sure you look at that so it's pretty straightforward these are designed for just hooking it into the tool and like holding it on the spark plug hole and you know if you get an odd size spark plug or something you know or if you're checking several uh, cylinders at one time that might be a quicker way of doing it but uh, I recommend using the spark plug fittings uh, so this is going to connect into the hose right here just like that so this goes from 0 up to 300 PSI uh, 300 psi is going to be like more for like diesel engines if you're checking compression on that most small engines are going to be right around 100 if they're in really good shape but here's the thing you get false readings on a lot of small engines because they have a compression release so that messes with the compression because you're testing an engine when it's when you're cranking it over either with a pull rope or at the starter you keep cranking it over until it don't go up anymore and that's going to be your compression reading now don't get confused with the leak down test this is not a leak down test. Well, I don't have the kit for that. We might do that eventually. But that's handy for testing piston rings or valves. This just gives you some numbers, give you an idea of what condition the engine's in. If you get an engine with low compression, it could just be the valves need work. It could be a leaking head gasket. Or the engine could be needing a new ring, like a complete rebuild. You know, you just don't know. This gives you some numbers. Oh, if you've got an engine that's running rough or something and it still has good compression, you can pretty much rule out valves or the engine needing rebuilt and it's probably you know, a carburetor or if it's a car engine a sensor or something you know but it is something that's nice to get some numbers on so you know, your standard uh, spark plug size is 14 millimeter so you got to pick out you know, which size will fit your engine uh, so let me go ahead and set this up and look at it in just a second okay so the first step is remove the spark plug uh, also, you want to do this on a cold engine to get more accurate results. So you want to keep that in mind. I'll turn the switch off just to keep this from sparking. There's not much need in it. But, uh, so you want to determine you know, which size will fit your spark plug threads. So this is the size we need right here. So we'll go ahead and thread this in. You don't have to get it like super tight. Just get it hand tight because it does have an O-ring. As you see, so it's going to seal off pretty good on its own. Uh, the same way with this, so just throw it in there. And now you're pretty much ready to test it. Just make sure everything's snug. And we'll try to get everything on camera here. Like I said, you just want to keep cranking it over until the number quits moving. So we're getting about 50 psi. I was expecting a little bit more than that out of a new old stock rig. But like I said, that's the compression release coming into effect, which is why I've always just went by a feel on this. This engine's got some really good compression. The way the valves are set on these with the factory settings, your intake valve don't fully close until the piston's about halfway up in the compression. 
whereas your most vehicle engines and all other engines without a compression release, it's going to be closed before the piston even starts coming up or almost right before it starts coming up. So that's the difference. Um, now let's get some numbers on a couple other engines. This is also the release to release the pressure off of it. Briggs and Stratton don't really provide too many numbers when it comes to compression testing. They say, which is another test I've done for years, is you know spin the engine until the, it'll hit on the compression stroke and if that flywheel bounces back like a third of a turn the engine has enough compression to run. And that's literally what Briggs and Stratton says. And I've had people tell me otherwise, but if you look on the Briggs and Stratton website and repair manuals, that's exactly what they say. Uh, some other engine manufacturers will give you some specs that will uh, compensate for the compression release. So you just have to keep that in mind too. But it does mess with the numbers on small engines. But the Briggs and Stratton test would be like taking the flywheel if it bounces back off compression, it's got enough compression to run. Like I said, that's literally what they said. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to do one more flathead on the video. This is another 5 horsepower. This is on the mini bike you seen me build a couple years ago. This engine's got high compression and a big cam in it. So we're going to get a probably a much higher reading on this engine. it looks like so like I said this engine doesn't have the compression release working on it so it's getting a much higher reading on it we're about 80 pounds is where we're at okay on to the next and this thing will be a fair fair test to uh, most of uh, Honda style engines well this engine's built y'all haven't seen this but there is a video I haven't put up um, this is a fully built 212 not not fully built it does have a, a little bit bigger cam in it and some other performance stuff. Nothing too crazy, but I figure we'll get some numbers on it. Then we'll compare it to a more normal 212 style engine. We're getting about 60 or 65 pounds. And this motor feels like it's got more than that. This is another Honda clone engine I got. It's a low air, it doesn't smoke or anything. And it's still just reading 50 PSI. This is on a wood chipper. All right, Bridging Stratton, 18.5 horsepower overhead valve. Model 31, doesn't smoke. Got really good compression, 125. So electric start engines, as you see, are going to have a little more higher compression. Yeah, so there you go, guys. <clears throat> On the bigger electric start engines, you can expect around 100, 125 PSI. And the pull start smaller engines and the flatheads are going to be about 50 to 60. I have seen them up higher than that before in other people's videos. You're going to have variations on it. I will talk about one other thing. At work, we had a Kawasaki, I think it was a 27 horsepower V-twin. And it just didn't have enough power and seemed like one cylinder was cutting out on it. I thought it was coils at first. And we checked the compression and one cylinder had 30 PSI and the other one had 70. So we compared it to another good running engine and both cylinders had almost 80 PSI. So I tore, tore the engine apart, did a valve job on it and put new head gaskets on it. And got both cylinders up to 70 PSI. So in that case it was just the valves and possible leaking head gaskets. So I'd say... For overhead valve engines, about 70 to 100 PSI is good. 125 is really good, as you've seen on that one engine. The smaller flathead engines are going to show you between 50 and 75 on average, I'll say. If you got any engine with this shows a real low number, it just don't seem right, and it's probably your valves or a head gasket leaking more than likely. So I just want to give you all some numbers, and like I said, this is for small engine repair. Uh, maybe eventually I'll do another video for automotive. So if you got any questions, comments, or suggestions for similar videos uh, feel free to leave a comment below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can i'm not able to answer all comments like i used to but i am trying to answer them all on the newest videos so just bear with me on that uh got a lot going on guys so thanks for watching